All right, screw the intro, because you are probably wondering what I've been up to with my game since my last devlog last year. Uh, curious about the explosive progress that I made, uh, and I'm about to show you. But but brace yourselves, because I'm gonna blow your mind in three, two, one. Yes, that's that's impressive. It's an explosion. Took me f four or five weeks. <laughs> Solo game development is amazing. <laughs> Let's get on with the video. No, no, it's, it's not the only thing that I've been working on. Um, it is the only thing that is uh, visually new since my last devlog. So I've been mostly working on the behavior tree uh, yet again. In the previous devlog, I think I already showed you um, some early versions of this behavior tree, in this case for the bird. Um, but you know how it goes with solo game development. Every time you um, level up in, in terms of knowledge, you have to refactor constantly. So I've been doing that. I've been learning more about behavior trees and I came up with a complete new one. Um, my next video will be a tutorial about the behavior tree. So I'm not going to explain you everything, but in this case, uh, I added a, a dying sequence for the bird. Uh, the bird can also fly away whenever the state is set to uh, scared. It can patrol um, and whenever it gets to this patrol, uh, patrol sequence, um, there's like a very big chance that it's going to chill. I thought that was a good proper naming of the sequence. <laughs> like a 75% chill chance. Whenever it's chilling, it, it will go to idle and then there's a 75% that it will pack to the ground. Uh, it can also pack another time. Um, it can tweet. It doesn't make the sound yet, but it does the tweet animation. Uh, I can easily put some sounds here whenever I figure out how to go about sound. That's something that I've never even touched yet with Godot. It probably shouldn't be that hard though. <laughs> I hope so. And when it's done being a very chill bird, it will pick a random position. It will try to move towards it. If it's not able to, because of some obstruction, it will jump over it. And then the whole thing starts over again in a very random fashion. So no bird movement is the same. Yeah, it took me quite a long time to really understand the behavior tree. Um, why I talk about it when you can show it? There you go. Here are the birds. As you can see, it will jump over the obstruction. Whenever you get close, the, the, the birds fly away. They also move in, a, in like in a pack, in a, in a group, and they can also alarm each other. Whenever one bird gets scared, the other birds will also fly away with a slight delay, so it's always natural. I put way too much effort into the birds. <laughs> like, it's ridiculous. <laughs> it's like the most, most advanced bird AI I've ever seen. I also changed the um, fishes in the background. They are way smaller now. I think some chappy uh, mentioned on Discord that their girlfriend thought they were dolphins. <laughs> and that's because I made the initial animation and the fish way too big. So whenever I wanted to scale it back to um, the right size, you couldn't really tell that it was pixel art. Therefore, I made it bigger and uh, eventually I just had to redo the whole animation. It's not perfect yet. I will, I will do some touch up later on, but the fishes are now smaller, way smaller. And what's very cool about this behavior tree, the refactored one, um, is that I made it very reusable. So I can easily implement the system to other NPCs, like the crabs that you can see right here. In this case, I removed the uh, movement part because I'm testing a different thing that I'm working on, and that's the staggering uh, system. So in this case, the crab uh, requires three damage points to get staggered, just like this. Um, it will eventually reset and go back to its normal mode. You have to hit a uh, enemy pretty rapidly. Uh, if you wait too long in between, it will never go into the, uh, the staggered mode. The weird animation, the, the wiggling, <laughs> that's a placeholder, <laughs> don't you worry. I just needed something uh, to test out the functionality. Oh, and I completely forgot, I also worked on the health and hurt box components uh, that I can apply to basically any character. The health component has a uh, variable, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, who, who would pronounce variable wrong? <laughs> that's stupid. 
In this case, the max health is set to 6. You can also make the character immortal because of a cutscene or any other logic that you come up with. The hurt box um, has a reference to the health component so it can uh, fire its signals and it can talk to each other. Alright, but you, you guys came here for the explosion. You know, the, the Michael Bay explosions. Um, yeah, I always loved how the Wind Waker went about the um, uh, despawning of the characters, the enemies. Whenever you defeat an enemy in Zelda the Wind Waker, uh, it would not just you know fade away or disappear whenever you are not looking. No, it had this very dramatic explosion. So I thought, why should I come up with something original when you can just steal something? <laughs> so I made the uh, yeah this explosion right over here. And I, I'm pretty sure I will be um, changing the artwork in the future or at least make it slightly more original. Yeah, it's pretty much a ripoff uh, and also not quite as good looking. But this is just a prototype. Uh, I think I will be creating my own artwork and give it a, a unique twist. Oh yeah, <laughs> this video I shared on Discord. The first time I added the explosion, there was something going wrong obviously. The explosion was being added every frame of the game, creating this extreme firestorm situation <laughs> but which surprisingly didn't even look that bad i can i could see this happen in the game you know for for some reason and then i fixed it so the explosion only happens once it still doesn't make any sense that the birds explode just before flying away that was just the most easy way for me to um, combine some testing for both the um, the birds ai and the explosion which was a cool exercise. I had no experience with particle systems at all. So I first started with the debris, which are basically pixels that just fly away very fast. In this case, it looks kind of gray, but that's because there's no lighting system over here. But those are white sparkles uh, made out of uh, little squares. The second one is the smoke with a slight delay. And the money maker, the actual explosion, are those particles. There are many ways to improve this still. It's still a, pr a prototype, an early draft. Um, I, I'm thinking of like a smoke ring on the floor and have like those fire particles like getting launched from the core, just like the Wind Waker. I think uh, this is, looks pretty cool for a very first test. I am most likely going to make a tutorial about this explosion effect, but it's basically this little sprite right over here it's in gray style by the way and then i import it as a particle i make it scale i make it rotate and then i put some kind of color overlay on it that makes it uh, a different color and then i messed around with the uh, glow system so it looks like it's emitting light and after I created the explosion, I could simply turn the orange into purple. And then you have the, um, you know, whatever you call it, the soul explosion, the death explosion. And because all the code is so reusable, you can now also um, kill the birds. Um, I obviously don't condone that. You know, I'm going to keep track of every bird that you killed, you psycho. And I'm going to confront you with it in, in the credits scene. Like, you're a sick bastard. You killed 300 birds. Don't kill birds, Not a, but you can though. <laughs> like I'm all for freedom. So you can also kill the birds now. Currently it's very hard to kill the birds because they fly away and I only implemented the attack from a idle state. So it's almost impossible to catch them. But we can change that by just making the fly away sequence right over here, uh, just fail every time, just like this. So now it's unable to fly away. Uh, and I think now I can just yeah, I can just uh, kill all the birds like a true psycho. <laughs> I'm sorry, bird. I'm sorry. And I'm pretty sure I'm going to change all this like a, a couple of hundred times, but I'm pretty happy so far with the results. Oh, there's another thing I wanted to show you. Uh, it's a hard thing to show you in the actual build because I, re I remove the ability for birds to just float in the air. But whenever you uh, kill an enemy, the cloud um, will go into the direction of the agent's velocity. So for example, when an enemy gets killed, whenever it's flying through the air, the cloud will also go towards that trajectory, like the same direction. So in this case, the bird uh, is in the air and whenever it gets hit, it will fly through the air. See, and then the, the, the clouds go to that same direction. Uh, it's still very rough and uh, whenever I created this video there wasn't even a attack animation. But you get the picture. 
Oh yeah, uh, since I moved uh, to this new place, I have to sit in a train for like 30 minutes or so whenever I go to work. So I started drawing out some things. Um, let me see if I can show you. Let me see if this works. Yeah. So I pretty much uh, designed the whole first level. I'm not sure if you can see. Uh, I will feature it in a different video, but there's like a marketplace, a cafe, a windmill right over here. Uh, there are some boats like a little haven. Yeah, I think I already said it on Discord, but um, putting things on paper, especially with just a pencil or a pen, really works. For some reason, you know, when you step away from the computer, <laughs> um, different ideas pop up. So I could really recommend just um, picking up a good old classic pencil. This page is all about the gameplay loop, the combat uh, gameplay loop. Yeah, I, I really believe in the overall combat loop. I really feel like this is a game I want to play myself. I was planning to make a short devlog, but I just keep on rambling. It's so easy to keep on talking about things that you're passionate about. My next video is gonna be a behavior tree tutorial. And in the meantime, I will obviously keep on working on my game as well. So more devlogs are bound to appear on your uh, YouTube uh, home screen if you subscribe and hit that bell notification. Um, so go and do that, it's free. And then I, um, yeah, I see you guys in the next video, all right? Bye-bye.